that last article on the uh, properties of snow and how you can use with your students the uh, weather that we're seeing today, really, with uh, some of your le science lessons? You mean, did I read it in the science teacher? I'm reading it right now. <laughs> yeah, but our latest issue just came. Well, how about this? Did you happen to see, and I, this blows my mind, that snow is actually an insulator? Did you know that? Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Well, did you know that snow, by the fact that it is highly reflective, can actually change the surface climate of, of the earth wherever there's a blanket of, of snowpack? Did you know that too? All right. Well, we're obviously getting nowhere fast. What, what's, what, yeah, that, that doesn't help either. Um, what, what exactly is this that you're showing me here? Well, it sounds like you're asking me if I know some things about the article. Yeah, and I was hoping for an answer, and you're not obviously giving me an answer. Well, in teaching terms, that is what we call formative assessment. And did you know that there are a whole bunch of technology tools that you can use to help track and, and know what students know and understand? Well, I did, I did know that, but I hate to tell you, what you just did there was not technology. All you did was show me a couple pieces of paper with, well, some ink blots or something on them. Right, but if you have the right tools, then not only can you figure out what students know, but you can keep track of it. And so you can go back and you can analyze your lessons, and you can find out on the fly where students' knowledge is so you can adjust your lessons appropriately. So how are those shapes going to let me do that? Well, this is using a tool called Plickers. So if you had uh, a phone, you could actually scan the room and you could get a quick sense of what students know using these as their answer card. So you're telling me that as a teacher, I could pretty much give every one of my students one of those tools. I could hold up my phone, and I'd be able to immediately see what they're all thinking. Works in seconds. Wow. But that's only one of the tools. So maybe we should take a look at some of the other types of tools that you can use for formative assessment. That's pretty cool. Let's do that. This month, we're taking a look at how you can use formative assessment with some technology tools to get a lot of information from your students. One of the uh, sites that I like to use is one called Kahoot. Now, if you go to Kahoot, you're going to be faced with this interface, and this would be from the student side. And the way Kahoot works is that the teacher controls the quiz on their end, and the students will use some type of device that's connected to the internet, phone, tablet, or a laptop computer, in order to um, play the game. So all the student would need is a game pin. And then when they, they type in their pin and hit enter, they're going to be asked to create their own team name. And so you could have them use their student name, but a lot of times it's fun. Now, on the back side, Kahoot looks like this where you have the ability to create a new quiz, discussion, or survey type questions, and then you can go through it. Let's just take a look at what their intro quiz will look like. And you can go through and get a lot of the, the um, resources that you may need online. And so what you'll see is when you create a, a quiz, you can um, display the game pin throughout. So I'll hit on in this case, and then you can um, sort through the options that you want and you'll hit launch. So when you're ready to launch the students with whatever device they have will type in the pin. In this case this is my pin right here. They type it in and then what will happen is you'll have um, some players who will want to um, join into this. So as you're watching I'm going to hopefully in real time um, I'm going to join in with this because you can see right now I have no players. So I'm on my phone, which you can't see at the moment, and I'm going to hit uh, enter. And so as we go in, it's asking me for uh, my nickname, and now I've joined the game. And so I'm in, and there it is. And so you can see my name. So now I can start the quiz. So there are 10 questions in this intro quiz, and... Uh, on my device, it's asking me if I'm going to be ready. So I can actually see this on my device. I don't actually have to have it on a projector. But here's the question, and then on your device, it'll have these four answers are actually probably just the symbols. And so the idea is to 
Um, put your answer in as quickly as you can. I just typed my answer in. These were all correct, and then you get a nice view for it. Um, you can, uh, what will happen is it'll tell you what position you're in, and you get more points for entering quickly your answer that is correct. And so it becomes competitive. So students can really get a lot out of this. Uh, it becomes a fun atmosphere. There's some music that'll play. Uh, it has sort of interesting graphics. So if you're just trying to get some information about your students, Kahoot is a great way to start. But one of the things that we may want to do is we may want to get reports back out of this that um, can tell us uh, how we're going to work. And that, so Socrative is one of those that, that will do that. And so it's very similar in that you can ask a quick question or an exit ticket out the door type of uh, um, question or a space race where students are racing to enter. But if I hit start quiz and I just choose a quiz, what I want you to notice is that this, the quizzes can be student paced so that they get immediate feedback, student paced where the student gets to navigate it, and so they won't necessarily get those answers until they're all the way done, and it can be teacher paced. So I can lead students through this. Now the power of using Socrative is that you're going to get results back um, uh, so that you can decide maybe your students know this information or don't know this information, and they can work through it. And so um, that's another powerful piece of that reporting. You know, one of the, one of the um, things that we mentioned in, um, in the article is that there's all kinds of tools like this. So uh, Poll Everywhere might be a little bit more appropriate for adults. And when you go to create your questions, so when I start to type, what you'll notice is that I can ask all different types of questions, and that's what you want to look for. So when I start thinking about what type of tool I want, I look for what I might want. So in this case, I want my students to be able to answer with open-ended. So that I'll get a text wall or a word cloud or clusters or tickers of answers. Multiple choice, of course, is always um, a good way to get information. And then you can have a clickable image, so you can actually upload an image and then your, your audience can respond, so you can give them things, you know, like point to this point on the animal or something like that. And so, so Poll Everywhere is another powerful tool. Um, most of these tools are free up until a limit, so Poll Everywhere allows you to use uh, this with 25 students for free. Uh, Kahoot, I haven't found uh, a real limit, and, and the same with Socrative. Now, if you're looking for something that's a little bit more powerful, I would suggest Nearpod. The way Nearpod works is that um, it's similar to Kahoot in that you would get a pin. And so if I'm going to run this, I have a PowerPoint file, and I'm going to run this in my live session. What's going to happen is anybody that wants to join would join with this pin. And so as people join in, uh, what will happen is I can see their names again. But the students don't necessarily need to, an account. But I, so as my students will um, go in here, um, what will happen is that they need the app if they are on a mobile device. If they are on a, um, if they're on a device where um, they're using a computer, they can just go to Nearpod.com and they can uh, actually join in that way. And so, so those are different ways that. Um, that you can actually join in to uh, this type of device. Now, so I'm on my mobile device, and so I'm going to hit in um, UIGVR, and I'll hit done. And so now I'm going to join in. And and once it lets me uh, once it lets me join in, again you can. Um, have them put in their name, and you can see that one student just joined in, and I'll send my name to them. And what will happen is, on their device, they will see this slide. So I'm essentially forcing my content onto their device so that they can sort of follow along with what's happening. So, you know, this was just a PowerPoint slide that I might have here, but I can also ask questions, okay? Um, and so students can respond. Now, what you what you should think about is what happens when they when they respond. 
um, I get these answers that will come in here. So uh, endothermic, maybe I'm thinking of hot things. Maybe that's right or not. But I have a choice as the teacher to then share this out. And so if I hit share, it's going to force this these answers back out to, um, to the students onto their screen. I don't have to do this, but this way I can see what's happening. And so I don't even need a projection device in order to be able to teach this way. I can have my, my device running, students will, on their devices, will have everything that they need. So I can continue on uh, with my lecture notes, and these slides, again, are being forced there, and then I can ask a poll. And so um, what do we think is going to happen if, um, if the temperature in an endothermic reaction goes up? And so if I choose to share it, what will happen is it will push out all the answers to the students so they'll be able to see what's happening. And then you can continue on with your notes. Now, this will keep a record, but you can draw the path of the graph. So on my, on my mobile device, it's giving me a picture of the, of the graph, and then I can sketch what I think is going to happen. And then when I'm done, uh, it will send the drawing here. And then I'll be able to see what the students were able to draw. And so, so as you go along, that can be really powerful for students to be able to annotate pictures as they happen. And so Nearpod is another great way to really get that student interaction. The final one I'm going to show you is something called Plickers. And so all of the devices, all the uh, formula assessment tools that I showed you up until this point really required you to have a device in each kid's hand. It could be a phone, it could be a tablet, it could be um, a computer, but they have to be connected to the internet. But Plickers is one that allows you to ask questions and if you have a phone as the teacher, you can collect formative assessment data. And so I'll just show you this and then I'll be right back to show you the other side of this. But what you're looking at here is the, the teacher's side where I've asked questions and I've created classes and so I have my questions ready to go. And so what I would do is I would in effect take my device and I will um, uh, ask that particular question. And I'll be right back in a moment to show you how this can work in a classroom. All right, so I'm in my classroom. My students aren't here, but I'll give you a chance to take a look and think about uh, how you might use plickers in your room. If you take a look again, you can see my room's pretty deep. And so I have students that sit all the way in the back. And the way plickers works is that you can ask multiple choice questions. And you have to make cards. So you can go on their site and you can print out a card like this. And what I did on the back was I numbered the cards and then I have them hold the card in a certain way for A, B, C, or D. So if I hold it this way, that would give them an answer of A, this would be B, this would be C, and this would be D. And so uh, each student gets this, and by numbering them, each student then has uh, the ability to have uh, a card assigned to them so I can track what they're doing. Now I have my phone, and what I'll do is, so all my students would be sitting out here with a card. I ask the question, the students hold their card up like this, and then I take my phone and I just go across the room like this, and it'll collect the information. So um, it, like if I show you my phone, what it, what's happening is uh, it's looking for one of the answers. And right there, it caught that answer, and you can see that it was D. And so all I do is, I'll say I'm done, is I take again my phone, I go like this. Now the students have to hold them up at different heights so you can see them and they can't put their hands over the, uh, the symbol. But even in the depth of my room, I'm able to uh, collect data from students sitting all the way in the back from my phone. And then on my phone I can just see, oh, they all have it right or they don't have it right. And so I really believe in the power of formative assessment and hopefully these technology tools that we shared with you uh, will get you interested in finding some that will work for you. And I would just point out there are a lot more out there and most of these tools are free.
So that's pretty helpful. I mean, when you think about how much it, and how important it is to differentiate your instruction for students, to be able to actually see what it is that each and every one of your students really knows and understands and can do on the fly can really change. That's a game changer in terms of being able to plan for instruction for your students. Well, and I th also think there's a lot of power in being able to track that knowledge and then be able to go back and look and see how students did over time or be able to discuss it with other teachers, parents, the student themselves, administrators. So it, it just gives you a lot of data about what's happening in your classroom. So really what it comes down to is I really need something like that for my own personal life. Just oh, I'm sure you do. Anything you can do to find out what people are thinking about you is a good thing. Thanks.